In this video, we're gonna talk about second countable spaces. So it's probably a good idea if you watch the video on first countable spaces before this one. So maybe take a minute and go back and do that. But let's get going here. So usual setup, X is a set, and T is a topology on the set X. We're gonna say that the topological space X comma T is second countable if there's a countable basis for the topology. So let's do some examples. So if you take your set to be the real line and let T be the usual topology, so thinking about college algebra, you know, something like A comma B with parentheses on the ends indicates a typical open interval, uh, or take those to be the basis for the topology is a better way to say that. This is a second countable space. And uh, let's talk about how come. So what do you need to do to be second countable, right? What's the definition say? You just need to exhibit a countable basis for the topology. And so, well, why don't I take my collection of subsets of the real line to be, well, my intervals that I know and love that are, that are open uh, from A to B, where A is less than B, and I'm just gonna require that the endpoints are just rational numbers. And how come I'm making the choice that they're rational numbers here? Well, because the rational numbers are countable. Therefore, this collection, fancy B, it has a countable number of elements as well. So this is a good basis for the topology on the real line. And there are some things that we're using here where if you took you know, any real number, you could find rational numbers as close as you want to the left of that number X and as close as you want to the right of that number X. So I hope that it's justifiable why uh, I could find an arbitrarily small interval of this form with rational endpoints that contains the real number you're interested in. You could do that for every real number. So that's trying to help with your intuition that uh, this truly is a basis for the topology. Okay, and so why is that good? Well, it's countable, therefore, uh, we've just shown that we've got a countable base for the topology, that's why the space, xt, in other words, the real is what the usual topology is second countable. All right, so let's look at a, maybe a, a, in this context, a, a bad topological space. What's somebody that's not second countable? Well, let's take the real line again, but now let's give it the lower limit topology. And I'll remind you about that in a moment, about what, how do you think about the lower limit topology in case you've never seen it before. Uh, this is not a second countable space though. So let's look at why, let's look at how come. And so by way of contradiction, let's suppose that uh, we did have a countable basis for the topology. So let's say we did have a countable basis for the lower limit topology. So I'm gonna denote my countable basis by fancy B, and then the elements in fancy B are these open sets B sub N. And how do I know it's countable again? Well, because I'm indexed by the natural numbers, which are countable. So let's talk about uh, what do we know? Let's let B prime be kind of the typical basis for the lower limit topology, which, what is that? B prime is more explicitly the following. The kind of building blocks for the lower limit topology that we're used to look like things with an interval with a bracket on the left and a parenthesis on the right, meaning we include the left endpoint, but we exclude the right endpoint. And again, I'm just saying here that A and B are any real number. So this B prime, fancy B prime, is again, typically what we think about uh, the building blocks of the lower limit topology to be. It's typically how we think of them. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna try to compare fancy B and fancy B prime. That's how we're gonna get to a contradiction here. So what do we know? We're assuming that B and fancy B prime, that these are both bases for the lower limit topology. In other words, both these bases generate the same topology. Recall that that means that the two bases themselves are equivalent. And this idea of equivalence, that's a vocabulary word from another video. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to use that this characterization of what it means for two bases to be equivalents. And in particular, part of what it means, just part of what it means for fancy B and fancy B prime to be equivalent is the following. For each kind of typical building block from fancy B prime, and for any X that you were to pick inside of that building block, you should be able to find somebody named BN from my other basis that contains X but such that bn is also completely contained inside of this interval from a to b. Now, that's just part of what it means, again, for these two bases to be equivalent. The full characterization of equivalence, in fact, has kind of a symmetric statement uh, right here where you can switch the fancy b with fancy b prime and you get something similar. Let me just draw you a picture, though. So what am I saying? So for each, if you took an interval from a to b where you got a bracket on the left and a parenthesis on the right, and if you took any x in that interval, like my picture over here, I'm saying that you should be able to find somebody from the other basis that fits inside that interval and is also a neighborhood of your point. So what are we gonna do? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my X, and you know, this should work for every X that's in that interval. Why don't we just focus on the X that's the left endpoint? So in particular, let's take X to be the left endpoint of such an interval here. So 
applying this characterization of what it means for the two bases to be equivalent again, I know that I could find a BN uh, in my countable basis such that well, A is contained in BN, but then BN is completely contained inside of this interval from A to B. So wait a minute, I'm supposed to be able to find a red interval like this that contains A somehow, but that the red interval is also completely contained inside of this interval from A to B. If you think about that for a second, that means that, well, the farthest left that BN could go, you can't go any more left than A. So in other words, A is the infimum of BN. So it's kind of like the minimum of that set. I'm going to say infimum because it's a set with, with many, many, many things. Um, so what did we just show? So we just showed, you know, there's nothing special about A here, right? A was just any real number. We just showed that every real number A occurs as the infimum of one of these sets BN. In other words, you could always find a natural number such that the infimum of BN for that natural number N, the infimum of BN is equal to your real number A. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about, what does that say one more time? That, this part right here, right, that works for every real number. That means that we've got a surjective function or a surjective map from the natural numbers to the real numbers. And what's the association? F of a natural number is going to associate it to the infimum of BN. But this is surjective, right? That says that the natural numbers can map onto the real numbers, which I think we know is ridiculous. The natural numbers are countable, whereas the real numbers are uncountable. So it definitely cannot be an onto map. That's the contradiction here. So that is why there is no countable basis for the real line with the lower limit topology. The next thing we want to do is let's compare how does first countable relate to second countable. And what we can say is the following, that every second countable space is also first countable. So let's look at the proof for how this should go. And also when I do this proof, you know, it's kind of good when you're, when you're trying to prove things to look at the structure of like what's, what's somebody doing in their proof. And typically what they do is they state the hypothesis. Let's say we've had a second countable space. And then what we try to do is just, all right, what's the definition of that? And try to just keep unrolling uh, that string and see how far you can go. So so if, if xt is second countable, that just means there's a countable basis for the topology there. And now what we want to do is try to argue why do we have a first countable space. So what do we need to do to be first countable? Remember that we need every local basis. So for at every point x, there's a local basis that's countable. So let's take an arbitrary element of our set. Let's let the following be a proposed, let's let the following subcollection, you're going to see it's kind of what we're proposing to be the local basis at x. So let's let fancy b sub x be all the things that are in my basis that exists, where again, B is countable here, uh, such that though X is in B. So just take all the neighborhoods of X that are already in your basis is what I'm saying. So what do we know then? Well, this is a subcollection of stuff in B. Therefore, it's definitely a subset of the stuff in B. You can think of it that way. Um, and so uh, in particular, right, well, B is countable. Therefore, uh, fancy B sub X is also countable since it's a subset of a countable set. Now, the next thing you need to do is show that this subcollection here is truly a local, local basis at your point x. And so remember, there's two things to do there. The first thing is that, well, does every element of uh, fancy b sub x, does it contain x? And yeah, by definition, it sure does. So by definition, we see that uh, every element b is a neighborhood of x. The next thing you need to do for the other part of showing that you've got a local basis at a point is for any arbitrary neighborhood of your point x, so for any arbitrary neighborhood of X is what I mean by this here, you need to show that there's somebody from your proposed, from your subcollection up here that uh, is completely contained in that U and is also a neighborhood of X. And so well, what are we gonna do? Here's where we're gonna utilize the fact that uh, where do these B's come from? Well, the B's come from a basis for the topology. And so uh, in that sense then, you know, I just need to show that there exists somebody named B from my collection where B is contained in U because I already know that X is in B. But again, how do we do that? I'm gonna use the fact that fancy B, my big collection up here is a basis. So I can definitely find a basis element such that X is in B. And uh, in that case, remember that says that B is definitely contained in my subcollection BX here. But again, what I keep trying to get to <laughs> is that such that B is also contained in this more arbitrary neighborhood of my point X. So again, that, those are the conditions of uh, what a basis is again. We're, we're just using, we're leveraging that. What does it mean for fancy B itself to be a basis? And that means for any arbitrary neighborhood of a point, you could find a basis element that's completely contained inside that neighborhood. Uh, I'm sorry, completely contained inside of you and is also a neighborhood of the point that you're interested in. So conclude that X comma T is first countable as well.
Now, what you want to be careful about, and writing in yellow, it's like a caution sign, it's like a yellow light. First countable does not imply second countable. So in other words, right, every countable space is first countable. The reverse is not necessarily true. So let's exhibit a first countable space that is not second countable. Well, let's use our old friend from above, take the real line, and let's let t be the lower limit topology. It turns out that this is first countable. I'm going to show you that it's first countable in a moment. But of course, we just looked at before, it's not second countable. So you can rewind and watch why. The real line with the lower limit topology is not second countable. So let's get into why is it first countable. And so what do we need to do to see that the real line with the lower limit topology is first countable? We just need to show that if you take a real number, it's got a countable local basis. And so, well, let's just exhibit one. So a local basis at X is the following. Let's just take BX to be the following subcollection. Let's take all these intervals where it's closed on the left and it's open on the right. But uh, what do we got here? I'm just gonna build this interval around X where X is the left endpoint, and I just go a little bit further away from X. And in particular, what am I doing? I'm kind of indexing this set by the natural numbers here. And that's my justification for why this is a countable collection of neighborhoods of X here. And what could you also, um, what could you also justify to yourself here? Well, one, every one of these things sure does contain my point X, so that's pretty cool, just by definition. But the other thing uh, that you might think through is similar to the above. If you were to take any arbitrary neighborhood from the lower limit topology, is it believable, and, and sorry, if you were to take any arbitrary neighborhood from the lower limit topology, say like a U, pick any point in that U, so pick any little X in that U, I hope that it's believable that you could sure find one of these that fits inside of that U. And so that is the other justification, uh, similar to what we were doing um, maybe up here. And so that proves that uh, we just kind of talked through the idea for uh, why any point has a countable local basis. And recall that that means that the space is first countable.